All right, what's going on guys? So today I'm gonna to be talking about whether or not the Cobb Stage 1 tune uh, is worth it for the Ford Focus RS. And I'm gonna be going over some of the features and I'm gonna do some comparisons. I can still uh, go to the stock tune fairly easily. Uh, so I can revert to the stock tune. I'll do like some pulls and uh, time the differences and you know, time takes to get from one speed to another while staying in the same gear so you get an idea of uh, how much more power it makes, how much you know faster it is. All right, so while I'm waiting for the car to warm up, I'll go through some of the features with this. So uh, you can have up to six gauges displayed on the screen here. Uh, it's pretty decent resolution. Uh, you know, you can see, you can read all the lettering and the, see the numbers just fine. But uh, it is very cool. I mean, there are, it depends on the car, but there are tons and tons of different gauges that you can watch. So I usually watch the uh, air fuel ratio this car uh, happens to have a wideband sensor on it which is pretty cool so I can watch the air fuel ratio and um, then I have boost pressure which is kind of redundant because I have a boost gauge but it is an analog gauge so I can't see I can't really tell exactly what boost I'm hitting both this and, you know it's digital so I can see exactly how many pounds I'm hitting and then charge air temperature you know it's like the uh, in or the temperature of the air after going through the intercooler basically and then I have the oil temperature, which I like to watch. I don't know, I kind of ran out of stuff I want to watch. So this one right here is just kind of the exhaust flange temp, which doesn't really matter. Um, and then I watch my ignition timing, which is kind of interesting sometimes. So I'll show you kind of how many different gauges there are. And there are just a ton and ton of different gauges on this thing. So <laughs> like it's like a never ending list. So here's the very top. And going down, it is a never, never, never ending list. There are just so many different gauges you can watch. It's absurd. Still going. <laughs> huge, huge list. There's the bottom, finally. But it's it's really pretty cool. And you have an endless list of gauges to watch if you want. Then also, you can do some other cool stuff. So there's the gauges. You can do like the performance thing, like time your zero to 60 and uh, your quarter mile. Now, for whatever reason, whenever I use launch control, this feature does not work. It bugs out and like glitches and like it will not record the time. So it's kind of useless because you can't use launch control. Like it, it won't time it, which is really disappointing. I was just looking forward to using that, but it's not a big deal. So you can also check your engine codes. If you have an engine code, uh, you can check with this. And then the tune uh, section of this, you can adjust some settings if you so desire. So you can change the RPM, like your rev limit, which I would advise against doing. But then you can change your flat foot shifting rev limit, which I really like this flat foot shifting feature on this. So like when you're shifting, you can uh, put your, or you don't have to let off the gas. It'll let off the gas for you, which is really nice. So it is really nice to definitely uh, improves your straight line speed a little bit because normally when you let off the gas you do uh, like all your boost you lose all your boost and you have to spool back up on this car which I'll demonstrate but with flat foot shifting uh, you stay in boost so you definitely uh, it's not a huge improvement but you do make a little bit of improvement and then you can change your launch control rev limit which is really cool uh, I think this is uh, pretty handy you can you know <laughs> you could set it at rev limiter which is pointless but it, like for rally cross, which I'm gonna be doing, I'm definitely gonna lower the rev limit because otherwise I'll just spin. So it is very handy to be able to change your or your uh, launch control rev limit. On different surfaces, you're gonna have different traction, so it is very nice to be able to change that. And you can disable the rear differential on this, which is kind of weird. I don't know why you'd want to do that. I guess if you're gonna dyno it, that's the kind of only reason you'd want to do it. So you can. Uh, disable the rear differential you have to restart the car to do that and then and then also you can completely disable traction control which is kind of cool and then the traction control slip modifier basically uh, adjusts how much like how invasive traction control is from my understanding and then you can change your map slot which you can have like three different maps or so without having to reflash the ECU which is nice uh, has three of them stock so you have the to go through your maps you hit cancel on the cruise control and then use these buttons here adjusting you see the tachometer moving I'm not revving the car but 
So number one is the race tune, number two is the stock tune, number three is the economy tune. So it is very easy to switch between these three tunes. That's kind of it for the features on this. You can data log your gauges. Uh, if you're like on a new tune or something, you can download like tunes from the internet onto this thing and like flash them on your car. So you can data log to make sure that, um you know, watch all your gauges like after you do a few pulls, watch them back and uh, make sure you don't go too lean or something or your knock sensors are going off. And then you can uh, completely uninstall the tune from the car. Supposedly it's undetectable from like a dealership if you do this, uh, Cobb claims. All right, so the car is about up to operating temp. The coolant temp is up to operating temperature. I usually wait until the oil temperature is um, at least to like 140 before I beat on it. So you really wanna wait until your oil is uh, at its you know operating temperature before you beat on your car so your oil does not have the same lubricating properties when it's cold as when it's you know at its like specified operating range so you know it's not going to lubricate your engine near as well if it's cold even if your coolant temperature is warm uh, it does not mean that your oil temperature is warm because oil takes a little bit longer to warm up and your oil temperature is definitely a lot more important than your coolant temperature all right so the first test um I'm on the race tune right now. So I'm gonna start in third gear and I'm gonna slow down to about 40 miles an hour and I'll step on it and then see how long it takes to get to 80 miles an hour. And this is on a flat surface too, flat road. I'm gonna be doing it on the same, same stretch of road. There's no variables. So from 40 miles an hour, let's see here. Close enough. I'll do a few runs so I get kind of an average. I can tell you from, uh, you know, the old butt dyno, the car, like, especially in the higher gears, like, it feels completely different from the stock tune. It's really incredible how much torque it makes. stock tune now but uh something to note it is on an aftermarket air filter if you're one of the people that believe that uh you know a cold air intake can make huge gains um there definitely are some gains to make with a less restrictive air filter but they usually aren't very significant all right so stock tune same stretch road <laughs> it feels like it's night and day really like driving it it feels so much slower on the stock tune. It's ridiculous. Third and fourth gear probably where you're gonna notice the biggest difference with the new tune. <laughs> it feels so much slower, it's crazy. Just for fun, I'm gonna do one on the Eco Tune because that's gonna be garbage. So the e Economy Tune, it only makes like 12 PSI at Redline and then usually only around like eight throughout most of the power van. Oh man, that's bad. <laughs> uh, it's so horribly slow. You do get a little bit better gas mileage on the economy tune. Uh, I've noticed one to two miles per gallon better on the highway, which is pretty significant. Um, if I'm on a boring stretch of road, I'll use it, but a lot of time I just stay in the race tune. The race tune and the stock tune don't really seem to have much of a fuel uh, consumption difference at like highway speeds. Obviously, if you're on the gas, the race tune is going to use a bit more. But at uh, highway speeds, it doesn't really seem to be much of a difference. Here's first gear on the economy tune. It's still a fairly quick car on the economy tune. The funny thing is it actually makes nearly exactly...
exactly as much horsepower as a Focus ST on the Economy 2 and actually makes it a tiny bit more. Okay, so I'll demonstrate the flat foot shifting here. Definitely helps you out with your straight line performance, but it is kind of annoying because if I pin it right now with the clutch in, it'll hold it right at 5,000 RPM. So if you're trying to rev match any higher than 5,000 RPM, it's really annoying because you can't get it to rev any higher than that. But other than that, you know, it's pretty cool. I don't really use it all that often, you know, just because I'm not really trying to get that extra tenth of a second when I'm just peeling around by myself. to do <laughs> just so you don't have to let off it's kind of weird it takes a little bit to get used to but um i'm sure there is a bit of a difference you probably make a little more time in the quarter mile doing that because uh, you don't fall out of boost because when you uh, shift normally you do fall out of boost if you can see the boost gauge over here it's the middle gauge so this is shifting normally Take, I mean this car spools really quick, but it does take a little bit of time for it to spool All right, so this is flat foot shifting Watch the base gauge there So it doesn't like fall nearly I mean when you shift normally you lose all boost for a split second but when you flat foot shift, it only drops down about 15 PSI. So you're already in boost. You're in boost the entire time. So you definitely save a little bit of time there. All right, probably my favorite feature about this is the easy access launch control. So you just have to put it in first, put your foot on the uh, clutch pedal, and then just, you know, floor it. And it just holds it right at whatever you set your two-step. So before getting the launch control was a huge huge pain in the butt anyone that has a focus rs or just like knows um how long it takes to get the launch control it's really it's just a huge inconvenience okay so before to get launch control you had to go through the menu here you had to go all the way through here down to settings and then driver assist launch control and then if you took more than like five seconds it would turn it off and you had to redo it I suppose I'll do it once here. Doesn't grip the best of the snow tires, but we'll do it. <laughs> oh fuck! Better redo that. Lock the freaking traction control back on. There we go. Track mode. This thing is very quick, like the 0 to 30 time on the RS is very, very quick, kind of dies off after that. But the 0 to 30 is right up there with a lot of uh, supercars, which is pretty crazy. So this does have like a huge amount of features, you know, it is, it definitely livens the car up a lot. It is very fun. Uh, it also is $650, <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of up to you whether you want to, I mean, you could potentially lose your warranty. Uh, I doubt it, really. Even if they know about it, your dealership would have to be kind of douchey to not honor the warranty if you had one of these. And then, uh, you know, also it's supposedly undetectable, so there's that. My dad and I are pretty good friends with the general manager at the dealership in town, because, uh, you know, we bought <laughs> both the RSs from there and my dad's a uh, pickup, so uh, they like us quite a bit. Also, a lot of dealerships will like warranty like pretty serious uh, modifications. I know my dad's friend, he has a SRT8 Jeep. He's the same guy I raced in this, you know, it was a really close race, about 60, and then this pulled away. That was on the stock tune. But um, 
he's actually putting a pro charger on his Jeep and the dealership is still like holding the warranty even though he has a freaking pro charger on his Jeep where he's you know getting one so I mean that kind of shows it really depends on your dealerships some dealerships have voided warranties over aftermarket intakes and then others will let you supercharge your vehicle and you can keep the warranty so it really kind of depends on the dealership but I would really doubt oh, there's some rumble strips here <laughs> go around those I really doubt the dealership would void warranty over something like this and um it does add a ton of adjustability with your car and a you know a ton of really cool stuff you can watch the gauges which is really nice you can check your engine codes you know the easy access launch control is almost worth it to me because then you can you know race from a stoplight without you know asking the guy to wait five seconds because you have to fucking activate launch control and flat foot shifting is pretty cool you can disable it if you're wondering i usually disable a lot if i'm uh, doing some spirited driving because uh, it's really annoying and you can't get a good rev match because you can't blip the rpm past 5000 rpm so you can deactivate that but i definitely would recommend this it makes like it's insane how big of a difference it makes especially like uh third and fourth gear pull so much harder it's ridiculous and then you can have the bragging rights you can see i hit 26.41 psi that's a lot of boost for a stock vehicle and you know it seems to be reliable i forgot to mention i have over 3,000 miles on the race tune so uh so far it is completely bulletproof i definitely don't baby this i mean i i, I let it warm up obviously but i don't uh, just put around town and drive like a grandma I do uh, full throttle, you know, pretty much every time I drive it. So if you guys enjoyed that video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. This channel is pretty small. If you guys want to see more uh, Focus RS content in the future, you know, go ahead and subscribe because I'm definitely doing a lot more videos of this. Uh, you know, browse the channel because we have a lot of other uh, good videos. So with all that said, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.